All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another breakdown. Here we go again. We got a BB passage, okay? This is the passage here. All right, as always, guys, do it on your own first and then resume the video and hear me break it down. So this is the first question, second question, third question, fourth question, and fifth question. We got five questions here, okay? So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Eric, and I'm on a mission to make sure that this MCAT is as easy as possible for you guys and to install the new belief inside you that this MCAT is actually way more easier than you think and that hitting that five, even 520, 521, 522, hitting those high scores is absolutely possible for anybody, anybody, okay? I messed up my first two years of college undergrad. Okay, I would party a lot. I was in a frat. I was president. I just drank and smoked and all this bad low-level behaviors, okay? I did not have a good knowledge of you know, I didn't have any good study habits. I would get like B's and C's and I managed to pull off a great MCAT score. Okay. So if I can do it, so can you. So can you. All right. I'm not any different than you at all. I'm the same person. I'm the same Eric. Okay. You can be a MCAT, you can be an MCAT tutor if you'd like to. Okay. But enough of me talking. Let's get into it, guys. This is how you break it down. This is how you read the passage. This is how you Make these details make sense. This is how you think like the MCAT. I'm going to show you how to think like the AMC because once you think like the AMC, the MCAT is yours. All right, let's begin. A major challenge facing cancer research is how to create therapies that specifically target and kill cancerous cells with minimal effects on non-malignant cells. All right, the first sentence explains what's going on and it makes complete sense. Okay, I like it. I'm not going to highlight anything because... There's nothing to highlight here, nothing to jot down a memory in my head, nothing to really focus in on, all right? I'm only highlighting when things stick out at me. That's it, okay? One of the most promising avenues is the targeting of cancer cells' metabolic profile. Cancerous cells have much higher glycotic flux, rate of glycolysis, than normal cells due in part to the rapid growth and cell division. Okay, I didn't know that, actually. I think I, eh, I don't know if I did. I don't know if I remember that, but cancerous cells, they do a lot more glycolysis. So because they do way more glycolysis than normal cells, we can target cancer cells. We can target that glycotic pathway. And this way we don't have to do damage to our normal cells. Malignant cells rely more on fermentation than normal cells. Okay. They rely more on fermentation. That is a fact I did not know before. So I'm going to highlight it. Thus, compounds that interfere with key glycotic enzymes may selectively induce apoptosis in cancer cells. One example of such a compound is chlorctz, which is shown in figure one. Cool. All right, everything's making sense so far, guys. There's no details getting lost, nothing like that. Take a break, clear your mind. Okay, make sure your mind is relaxed. If your mind is stressed, for maybe another passage or anything else, it's gonna shut down your higher level thinking. All right, so relax, breathe in and out. Let's read this. CTZ, which is the drug, interferes with glycolysis, specifically with the enzymes hexokinase, phosphofructokinase, and aldolase. Okay, this causes cell cycle arrest in G1 and leads to apoptosis. All right, I'm highlighting this fact here so I can make a mental note in my head in case the question asks for you know some type of mechanism of G1 and something like that. However, the structure of CTZ limits its tissue delivery, but restricts therapeutic use of CTZ. To circumvent this problem, to fix this problem, researchers created nanomicelles embedded with CTZ. Okay. The efficacy of the nano encapsulated version of CTZ was compared to that of uncapsulated CTZ for treating human breast cancer cell line MC. F7. All right. After reading this sentence here, it's all making sense. Okay. But after reading it, you can kind of get a little prediction in your head. Okay. What's my little prediction in my head? Well, they told me that this is a drug here used to target glycolysis. Okay. And they told me that they needed to use my cells to help deliver this drug. Okay. And then they said, okay, we did research on drugs on the drug when used with a encapsulated my cell and we did research on the drug using an uncapsulated delivery 
All right, and in my head, I'm thinking, okay, what's probably going to work better, the capsulated or the uncapsulated? And in my head, I'm thinking, most likely the encapsulated drug will work better. Okay, if you have a prediction of the research already going on in your brain a little bit, you're crushing it, you're killing it. Okay, you're doing good. In vitro, MCF7 cell populations were treated with identical concentrations, 50 micromolarity. Okay, every time you see the big M, you say molarity. Just say it out loud. Okay, of NCTZ and UCTZ for 24 hours. PFK and HK activity were assayed before and after treatment to measure glycolytic ability. Whenever they tell you something was assayed before and after, okay, this is a very good research technique. Okay, if you're a researcher, you want information before and you want information after. Okay, just letting you guys know that. Cytosolic ATP concentrations were also measured. Cool. This research is really good. They're doing a very good job here. They want to really prove the results. They're doing amazing. Okay, that's how I'm thinking. You could also think like you're evalu evaluating the research. Okay, you could think, hmm, good job, guys. Or you could think, hmm, they should have done this. Okay, be a critic. Do it. You're smart. You can do it. The results are shown in Table 1. Enzyme activity is expressed as a value normalized to the baseline levels present without the encapsulation. And they give us a table, and we don't look at the um, figures and tables yet. We only look at it when the question asks for it to save time. Okay, let's go to the question here. PET, positron emission tomography, scans follow the movement of a radioactively labeled compound throughout the body and are often used to detect metabolic activity in cancer cells relative to normal cells. The labeled compound is most likely what? Well, okay. Um, you could get this from your content review. Okay, you should know PET scans, MRI, uh, fMRI. You should know all those. All right, they use glucose. They radioactively label glucose. And since the cancer cells, you know, are going to uh, metabolize glucose a lot faster than normal cells, you want to label the glucose. Wherever glucose is labeled and wherever it gets broken down the quickest is where we have cancer. All right. So it makes sense to be glucose. All right, this one you could get away with your content review. It's an easy question. Let's keep going here. Which of the following most accurately summarizes the efficacy of NCTZ versus UCTZ against MCF7 in vitro? So the difference between encapsulated versus uncapsulated. Okay, remember the little prediction I made in my head? Well, let's see if it um, corresponds with the table results. All right, so let's see. Before encapsulated treatment, we get 1, 1, 6.8. After and, and, uh, CTZ encapsulated treatment, we get lower PFK activity, lower HK activity, and lower ATP. And this is telling me that this encapsulated treatment worked pretty well. It was effective. All right? It lowered the activity of all the enzymes. Very good job. Let's look at the uncapsulated. 1, 1, 7.2. 0.641, 0.997, and 7.1. This tells me that the uncapsulated version of CTZ was only effective for against PFK. All right, it wasn't really effective here. This is very little. This is very little. So that's what we got here. So in summary, using the encapsulated version of CTZ works a lot better. So let's see what corresponds with this. Encapsulated CTZ and UCTZ are equally effective. No, they are not equally effective. Okay, we see encapsulated is way better. Look, bam, bam, bam. NCTZ is less effective than UCTZ as it is less, no. NCTZ is more effective. Okay, look at that. It reduces the levels way more than the U. UCTZ is more effective. No, UTC is not more effective. Okay. NCTZ is more effective than UTZZ as it reduces systolic ATP to a greater extent. I mean, it also reduces this to a greater extent and this one, but I mean, this is true as well. It does decrease ATP as well. So the answer is B here, the process of elimination and just looking at the results here. I told you guys, the MCAT is easy, okay? Whoever tells you that it's crazy hard and impossible, they just want you to go through what they went through. <laughs> That's it, okay? They, they, those people are lying to you. They didn't have the right mindset coming in. Okay, and they didn't have the right study plan. According to the passage, which feature of CTZ presents the most significant obstacle to use to its use as a cancer drug? 
All right, so we look at CTZ here. What do we? What can we say about this, guys? Let's use our brain here. I see two benzene rings. I see hydrophobicity here. Well, very hydrophobic. All right, this is, mm, this is a little little polar. This Cl minus makes it a little polar. You can say that this is more hydrophobic than polar. So it's a hydrophobic molecule. Also, guys, they used a micelle. Okay, they used a micelle to deliver this drug. All right, why would they need to use a micelle? What does a micelle do? Well, remember, guys, a micelle. All right, let's look at it like this. Okay. Oh, I should have made this longer. Okay, forget that one. Look at this one. Okay. All right, this is the micelle. These are polar head groups. These are circles here. Okay. Inside is very hydrophobic. Outside is hydrophilic. All right. The micelle is used. And you should know this is pretty important. Okay. Micelle is used to deliver drugs because the hydrophobic, let's say this is some hydrophobic drug here. Okay. The hydrophobic drug could go inside the micelle, react with the hydrophobic tails. And now this micelle can go to its target and deliver this hydrophobic drug. Okay. If we did not have the micelle, this hydrophobic drug all right, would have a hard time being delivered to the blood, to fluids, okay, because it is insoluble. All right, hydrophobic would not be soluble in the fluid in the blood, so we need that micelle for delivery, okay. So the problem with this is that it's low soluble in hydrophilic media, okay. It's lipophilic. Low solubility in hydrophobic media? No, it has low solubility in hydrophilic. It's gonna have a hard time um, being soluble in blood. Aromatic structure, electron D. Okay, remember guys, if you have two answer choices that are very similar, they're both wrong. Aromatic structure, electron delocalization, this pretty much means the same thing here. Okay, so answer is A. I, I went over the difference between the, I mean, I went over um, what electron delocalization really is in another video, so you guys can check that out. 50 is A. If you want the video, just comment down below. I'll leave a link to it because I know I have a lot of videos. If necessary to design a new experiment, which of the following best explains why researchers could use measurements of intracellular lactate levels in cancer cells to assess efficacy of cancer drugs? Okay. Well, they told us that there's more glycolysis in cancer cells. And after glycolysis, we can do fermentation. Fermentation produces lactate or lactic acid. Okay. So let's see what we got here. High lactate levels would indicate that glycolysis is significantly inhibited. No. Okay. If glycolysis is inhibited, we would not have the pyruvate to do fermentation. All right. Low IL would indicate that glycolysis is significantly inhibited. Yeah. If we have low lactate, we're not going to, we're going to have low pyruvate. And if we have low pyruvate, we're going to have low glycolysis. Glycolysis will be inhibited. High IL would indicate that no, pencil phosphate pathway does no, doesn't has no correlation here. Okay. Answer is B. According to the experiment results, which enzyme is most sensitive to inhibition by CTZ? Cool. Let's go straight to the results, guys. Easy, easy, easy stuff here. This is the blueprint exam as well. So these are known to be a little harder than your regular AMC FLs. Okay. Which enzyme is most sensitive? Okay. PFK. Okay. goes down by, let's say like 0.4 ish, 0 0.379, 0.379. It goes down by, all right. This one goes down by 0.288, I think. 0.278, something like that. So this goes down way more. This one as well. Okay. BFK. It goes down the farthest. There's a big difference from 1 to 0.621. So it's inhibited more. It's sensitive. It's more sensitized to inhibition. All right. That's how you think about it. Really simply, guys. The answer is BFK. All right. I'm going to do this in the next video, but let's see if we got all of them right. Let's see if we got all of them right. Okay. Bam. Ba bam. That was, yeah, that was correct. Ba bam. That was correct as well. 
bam that was correct as well bam all correct guys that's how you do it that's how you get that 132 you make it easy you make it easy all right if you're interested in working with me okay i have a crazy ultimate fully optimized program to hit your mcat target score it's called mcat university all right in order to join mcat university you have to interview okay you'll be working one-on-one -on -one with me i'll make sure you get your target score i've done it plenty of times with other pre-meds and i can do it fast fast all right i could cut in half the time you need to hit your target score i can do that i'll give you the schedule i'll give you exactly what to do step by step all you gotta do is just follow it's pretty easy all right so if you're interested in that go ahead to the comment section click on the link fill out the application book an interview and if you're a good fit you'll join mcat university and you're going to hit your target score i'll see you guys in the next video peace